welcome to my apiary. pellets have sat overnight and again my shop is very small and there's a lot of stuff in here so I only really had space to build 20 I actually built 22 yesterday uh, that's okay I was <laughs> tired ready to go in anyway so what I have to do now is I'm going to finish off the top of these so that then uh, they'll again sit overnight and then they can go into cold storage here on the farm and then I can switch gears back again and build another 20 or so maybe 25 we'll see so first order of business get my utility knife out here and just trim whatever PL premium may have squeezed out there's very little on some of these areas but it's there side and there's also an area that I want to trim it's right here uh, I guess you can't see that you'll see it here there's some peel premium here because uh, when I'm all done I'm gonna run my router along there and it's got a, a guide bearing and the bearing will hit that glue squeeze out. So I just want to make sure that's not there. It's easy to take care of now. So that's done. Now, when I do the top shims, I call them, I like to start at the back from the perspective of the back. And so then I start with the back shim, which is here. And then I'll put a couple of side shims here. Put my center shim here and lastly my front shim here and so you'll notice a couple of things the side shims and the center shim uh, stick over the front and not only that but the plywood here is longer than the 2x4 the 2x4 is cut to proper uh, length and so when I'm all done this whole assembly goes on the table saw upside down with the back registered against the fence and it's cut to 21 and 5 8 overall size so that'll take care of whatever overhang I have here and it'll take care of this little bit overhang here that just makes a really nice perfect uh, alignment on, on that system I'm using my little glue bot but this is put together with the uh, most expensive glue known to man <laughs> but it's also one of the best glues type on three it's a waterproof and f uh, food safe glue and it's an extremely uh, good glue for adherence uh, so I'm going to try this little glue bot this is uh, something I got for Christmas uh, it works pretty good it may or may not be appropriate for this kind of a project start with the back okay so now what I want is I want three quarters of an inch between the back of the pallet and the back of this shim okay and what that's going to do is give me a little overhang here that will match up with the cover the end cleat on the cover and I don't need to overthink that these are these are actually seven eighths I often cut 
uh, one inch wide shim for this side uh, and the back but I had to uh, actually this one is this one is one inch these are seven eighths wide and three quarter tall so they're, they're an eighth of an inch difference but I can see it I had a whack of seven eighths material so I just opted for seven eighths shims here that's plenty big enough so all I do is I'll put that side shim at the back and just run my thumbs along the plywood and uh, Bob's your uncle that's where it sits so uh, we'll glue that on we'll glue that and staple it I don't bother spreading glue for this to the end, end of the plywood there, get one in there, get one in the center, and one in the end. These, these long narrow strips are very rarely straight, uh, so you have to kind of just bend it a little bit. So, yeah, I'll just angle this a bit. come through the bottom. Otherwise I'd have to swap out for a shorter staple and, and that's a whole circus. Okay so there's my first shim on the top. If I don't get any of these uh, seven eighths up <laughs> then I'll be doing good. So we'll put this side shim on here next. I like to get a little tiny bit of glue Hold it to the back. We can put the glue on the plywood or the shim. Doesn't matter which. And line it up with the edge of the plywood. Fingers, the fingers have to be an inch and a half from the resting place of the staple will come through from time to time and get you in the fingers and this squeeze out can it can it can remain it's not going to hurt anything it's just again you know gonna be kind of tidy with your project So what you do want to take care of is on the outside. That makes an awful mess. Again, it's not part of the function of the equipment. It's just kind of when you deliver it to a customer, you want them to smile and not say, well, it's kind of messy. <laughs> okay, so each one of these I end up measuring. 16 and 3 quarters is center. Measure center. This piece is two inches wide, so I measure center on both ends. And I'll also measure center on this piece and mark it. It's eight, so of course I'm sure everybody can do the math on what's half of eight. And if you can't, it's four. Okay, so this, uh, the one thing I need to do here is this front screw comes out. <laughs> There's no battery in that. This will do. In the bin. Okay, thank goodness for power tools. Remember the good old days and everything was done by hand.
I'm gonna try this little guy. This is a little glue spreader. It's it's a kind of a silicone brush, and uh, kind of works like a a mud trowel. It leaves little lines. It's kind of nice because it, it helps you gauge how much glue you're getting on there, which that's not enough for what I want. This this material is um, a lot of undulations in it, so I need a tiny bit of gap filling property with my glue. So we'll just try this, see how that goes. I'm going to just give it a little more like that. Oh, the other thing I have to do is uh, measure and mark. So if I measure 16 and 3 quarter there, I won't be able to see it on the far side of that piece of wood. So I need to back up an inch and uh, mark it 15 and 3 quarter. And that's going to give me the edge of my... I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the end. Line that up with my mark. Line that up with that mark. I get my big staple hooked up. And I can bang this one in. kind of zigzag all the way down. mark here, my mark here, and that goes in just like that. Now there's there's a chance that I can get that skewed a little bit, and even if it is, it's not important. I'm going to drop one right in the middle. Remember that 2x4. And then finish off with a couple of angled to the work here. So this one's done. The remaining tasks on this are uh, drill drill for the U-clip and trim the front and then do a little bit of trimming on the bottom of those runners that I pointed out earlier. Can't see it but right here by my right hand is the stack of pallets I built. It's uh, over seven feet high when I started here. So here's a manufacturing defect. I didn't get this uh, edge lined up very well. Not going to affect anything. I'm not going to bother to adjust it. I can't anyway because it's all glued together. And I didn't start with the back. I like to prioritize what I'm trying to worry about setting up. I'm not concerned with that end of it at this point. I just want to get it flush on the end and flush to the back. Tap that in. Then go to the center. Same thing. Flush that up to the back. Tap it in. 
I can assume that it's flush here, which it is. Can't do anything about that now anyway. And then just uh, drive a couple more in there. glue all the way up to the top on this because my piece isn't full height. Alright, let's go to town here. Quite a bit stays in the brush, so first time or two you use it, it soaks up a lot of glue. It's not enough yet. That airline is a little inconvenient. So, by measure, that should be 12 and 3 quarter. 12 and 3 quarter here. Yeah, I guess that's just the inaccuracy in my pencil. Really. Gonna bother get too much glue on the front part because uh, it uh, gets cut off anyway. That Makita goes off like a goes off like a jackhammer. It's really loud. Two down, 113 to go. Of course, I've been working ahead off camera. There's so many of these to do. There's there's really nothing new to see. 
uh, during the process just over and over again. This is going to take me a long time. I've totally completed 20 pallets. I've got 10 here that uh, have the underpinnings put together. Uh, so now I'm going to build the tops. These have, these have sat overnight so the the glue is uh, set set fairly good. It, it's still, you know, PL Premium never gets hard. It's just kind of rubbery. Uh, I think it might get a little harder than what it is, but uh, for all intents and purposes, it's set. So I'm going to build the top shims on these, uh, which I've already shown you. And one thing I didn't do in the process was I didn't run the, the chamfer, it's called, on the edge of these runners. Decided to do that during this process, and I'll show you the little router bit here. There you can see it. So that just runs along and makes a just a bevel on the edge. And again, why that is, is I found the first year I built these that that sharp edge, as you're setting a, a pallet on a, a cover on the hives below. Uh, that edge can catch on the the top cleat on the, the lid and if it if it catches there by just a tiny bit it won't slide off it won't realign itself it just sits there so I just run a uh, little chamfer there and uh, that relieves that issue handy dandy little trim router this is my favorite router I use it more than far more than anything else so most of the routing I do is just this kind of light duty stuff. A little bit of trivia, I did some rough uh, measuring on the glue consumption for pallets and it appears that one pallet uses about an ounce of this. This is a 16 ounce container and I'm assuming that's American measures. And, uh, and one ounce, uh, you, you know, I can do about 16 pallets approximately with that much glue so that's uh, you know it's not a small amount but it's reasonable and then of course you know milli milliliters uh, milliliters in this stuff there's 295 in this tube and I think it was 44 milliliters of peel premium for a pallet this is the small tube I was using the large tube I have one left still, and uh, I was having a terrible time. My caulking gun is kind of broken a little bit, the, the large caulking gun. And those big tubes are really hard to handle too, so I've got a whack of these little tubes, and that's uh, really helping me out right now, considering my my large caulking gun is, is kind of broken. Okay, I decided to drill these... Uh, drill the screw holes for these clips and sure enough I've forgotten to take that screw out and that uh, that hole matches exactly so I've, I've drilled through the little board here but you can't drive a screw in that so what I'm going to do is I've got a drill bit that is uh, about the size of the, the head of the screw okay, it gets right down to, to the screw I should be able to pull that screw out. And I'll get it over here. Right, okay. It's tough to match it right up with the screw head. Too much to drill the screw head off. I don't want to damage it. There we go. Well, there's the offending member right there. 
So that's fine. That uh, that screw hole is too big, but that won't really affect anything. Once the clip goes on there, the screw goes down through it, and uh, like I say, the the screw is going to go down down in here. So this one is the same thing. Set this one aside. Okay, so when I was drilling this with the clip for a pattern, you can hear the drill bit just hitting that screw. hitting somewhere on the screw so there's no guarantees that the screw is exactly lined up with the hole but it's somewhere in there there it is it's kind of pulling that up a bit so let's pull a little piece out of there again not a big deal but I'll just put some glue in there to fill the space. Okay. Not as good as new. Better than new in some respects. That glue is harder and stronger than the wood itself. So No great damage. Making progress here on this pallet build. Uh, I've got, what, 30 built complete. I've got ten more, ten more bottom pieces done over there. I do the bottom underpinnings one day, and I'll do the top shim parts the next day uh, for various logistical reasons. I wanted to talk a little more about uh, wood movement. Uh, I know I've talked about that a few times. You may be getting tired of it, but I think it's important. I think it's more important than a lot of times we, certainly in building beekeeping equipment uh, really give it credit for. So because I've got some completed pallets here, I want to put it in context as far as uh, why wood movement, uh, taking wood movement in, into account is important. This is a completed pallet. There is one operation to complete on this and that's to trim the front. All of my material extends past the 2x4s a little bit and that will get trimmed. And that's a good thing because I got this little block on a little bit crooked uh, which won't affect the operation of the pallet at all. And that will mostly smooth out when I trim that on the table saw. So. However, I want to talk about wood movement. So you say plywood is what it is because each lamination runs in an opposite direction. And that's true, however, it's not exactly true. You see the outer lamination runs lengthways on this piece, same as on the other side. And if you look closely, these are the outside laminations that run this direction. But these two inside ones do as well. Okay. So what we've got here, uh, on this particular plywood, and not all plywood is the same. So you maybe have to look at the material you're using. What I'm using here is is two sheets of 3 8 plywood in essence because there's only these two laminations that run across this way. Now why is that important? Well that is important because now we have four laminations with the grain running this way. We have four, okay, and we have two running that way. So if this plywood gets wet, if it gets uniformly wet the entire way through, this plywood will warp in this direction more readily than the other. Where this comes into play with the pallet, and the covers are similar, but where this comes into play with the pallet, because my grain 
is running this way by choice. When this gets wet, when the hive produces moisture and uh, this absorbs the moisture, uh, when the ground is damp, the grass is you know, coming up under it, all those kind of things, causing moisture from the outside. Okay? The inside of the plywood is still fairly stable and dry, etc. This plywood will tend to warp. Let me pick it up here. The plywood will tend to warp in this direction here. Okay? Because the outside lamination and the center two and the bottom are running this way, then the plywood will tend to warp front to back like this. Okay? And as it dries, it'll dry the other way. If it gets wet on the bottom, it'll want to go the other way. Longitudinally, it's quite stable because we have two laminations trying to warp this way and we have four uh, keeping it flat. Okay, so we have four laminations that might tend to want to warp this direction or this direction. And guess what we have to stabilize that? We have three two by fours on this pallet. A two by four here, here, and here. So that will help stabilize this front to back. What do we have to stabilize it if I were to put that that plywood the other way with the green running front to back? Then the plywood would tend to want to warp this direction and be stable in this direction. So what do we have? Well, we have a three-quarter inch shim here at the back. Uh, you know, this little piece would help, but it's not very long. And then we have the runners that go from side to side. So there's a little bit of support there. The fact that these runners are offset from the plywood, that makes a structural system, and it does help support it. However, I would never suggest that that's better support than you know, we've got 33 and a half inches from side to side to uh, to stabilize with those those two systems, the two runners and the back shim. That's a lot of work over 33 and a half inches if, if the grain is running this direction. Grain running this direction, we have 21 and 5 eighths uh, distance, so far shorter distance to stabilize, and we have three two by fours which have PL premium and four screws here and, and five six you know we've got the the big ones there to hold the clips so we've got far more stabilizing structure uh, plus a, a far shorter distance you know what is it forty percent or something actually no it's more the other way sixty percent uh, so, so that I wanted to point out, and, and again, different plywood is, is different. You can have more laminations, you can have uh, a more even distribution of laminations. Uh, I think this stuff is put together specifically like this, exactly so that it will remain, um, it will remain stable in, uh, in, in, in this direction, right? So we have we have four laminations running this way in this sheet and therefore it will be far more stable in the long grain uh, direction. And this, this is manufactured I think for uh, sheeting on, on the outside of a house or flooring or something like that, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's just a little bit more and, and when it comes to covers, when I start putting together the covers, I'll show you again how how the main structures of the cover, meaning the uh, the top cleat and the end cleat, work with the grain direction on the plywood to stabilize it. Whereas along the edge of a cover, all you've got is a little half inch shim along that side to help stabilize it. It doesn't really offer you that much. Lumber bends pretty easily. So I just I just wanted to cover that.